Today marks 50 years since Title IX was signed into law. It prohibits sex-based discrimination in education, and that includes sports. So women athletes do have more opportunity now than ever, but truly, the gaps between men's and women's athletic programs haven't gone away. KSHB's Todd Palmer learned the impact Title IX has made in the lives of people who call the Metro home. Copeland with four points now. Missouri answers right back. The 37 words that forever transformed the landscape of athletics for girls and women in the United States became federal law a half century ago on June 23rd, 1972. That's line toward left center field. It is in the air all the way. It is gone. But the journey since Title IX went into effect has hardly been a straight line from ensuring opportunity to universal embrace. The NCAA wasn't interested in women's sports at the beginning. And so women had to form their own organization called the AIAW. And it wasn't until they started having success and signing television contracts and getting good crowds and playing in Madison Square Garden that the NCAA finally said, yeah, we need to have women's sports under our umbrella. Well, it took 10 years before the NCAA staged its first women's college basketball national championship tournament. There's no denying the movement set in motion by Title IX. And Title IX was absolutely critical in creating opportunities, especially in high school settings. Most high schools did not have sports for girls, did not have state championships for girls until Title IX was passed. And you can't have college sports, really, if you don't have high school sports. In the corner, Zellis off on a three. Women's professional sports have faced a steeper climb because there is no legislative fix. The rise of the WNBA and the U.S. women's national team's success at the 1999 World Cup helped catapult women's sports in the late 1990s. But it's been much more of a grassroots effort. Now, Kansas City has become ground zero for a potentially revolutionary experiment. We want to have a model that transcends not just soccer, but all of women's sports. Look at this effort! Oh! Chris and his wife Angie, who co-own The Current with Brittany Mahomes, have invested millions in a new training center, which opened this week, and a new riverfront stadium, which breaks ground in the fall. It's the first time a women's sports ownership group has poured so much into facilities for a women's professional team. And it may be a game changer. This is a brand new model. I think it's really going to make people think. Bar should always be being raised. And I think that is exactly what we're doing here. And I think it changes very much the way, you know, a, a, an athlete approaches their career, their sport, their goals. I think you, you know, if you, the best you can ever achieve is is playing in your backyard. That's a very different thing than playing in high school and college. And it's a wildly different thing than, than earning a living playing the sport of your dreams. Laying it over the top, it's in! Kansas City! It's also up the game as the current look to lead the charge into the next 50 years of growth and development for women's sports from that seed planted 50 years ago by Title IX. And the fact that Kansas City is a, a beacon and a, a role model for the rest of the country and the world to show what can be done when you invest in women's sports at the professional level and you know, their leadership will create opportunities and create a ripple effect throughout the world. Other NWSL teams have taken notice, which could spur a new wave of sports infrastructure designed and built specifically for women's teams. What I have said is I'm creating a playbook that we're going to want to share because it's going to be a successful playbook of how to do it. Todd Palmer, KSHB 41 News.